What is up guys, welcome to another video and today we're going to go ahead and show off some drifting gameplay for you guys because I actually haven't actually seen many people cover the drifting in this game which is quite weird uh, because it's really really fun and it's really really improved from the last game luckily enough I've actually got drifting gameplay with more than one car I actually can't think of many other people that probably do have that much um, but I, I've got some gameplay with this Mercia Lago and luckily I also have some with a 370Z now you may have seen some of this gameplay before a bit later some of the stuff now you've seen um, is stuff which I haven't shown off before but some of the clips later you may have seen in some of the earlier customization videos but today we're gonna go ahead and just cover the uh, overall discipline of drifting in this game how it works and um, what you can do to you know max out your score what I'm gonna say is pretty it's gonna be pretty self-explanatory for those that have drifted in other games before um, but I'm gonna give my take on it and hopefully you know you learn something new if you if you're a, you're a newer player to the so without further ado, let's go ahead and get straight into this. So the drifting discipline in this game comes under the street racing kind of a family of events, or the street racing discipline, I should say. Um, and with this, you know, you obviously need your own drift spec car. With drift spec cars, usually the camber is absolutely mad on the front. It's a bit less on the rear, just like real life drift cars are. And they have a completely different handling model to all the other cars in the game. They have a lot more of a pendulum effect. Um, I wouldn't say it's anywhere near, near like Need for Speed, as you do have to actually have to counter steer, throttle control and you know use your left foot braking in this mode. It's not as simple as just putting it in the corner, tap to brake and that's it. You are going to have to wiggle it round, you're going to have to try and max out your points, you are going to have to actually control your car manually and that's something which is initially tough to get used to and you'll see in a bit of the late, a few of the later clips um, when I was first trying out the drift mode I did genuinely struggle because it is not as easy as it looks. In drift events you will be put on a specific track that's you know closed off um, and you will be basically be asked to get a certain amount of points which you can see at the top in this specific screen uh, as you chain drifts together you will get a higher combo as you can see right now I'm on a 12 13 combo uh, and obviously the more drift you chain the higher combo it goes up and obviously you want to keep the combo going if you do hit the wall you will lose all your points and that is obviously not good because who wants to lose their points when drifting and that's pretty much the general consensus for this mode obviously the more angle you get the better the, the, the faster you go in the better uh, all the kind of casual drifting stuff that you would expect to see in a drifting mode in a game um just generally, you know, the faster you go into corner, the better, the more angle you get, the better. Obviously, in real life drifting, it's all about, you know, uh, judging people on their drifts. As where, obviously, in the crew, it's a bit different because it's a video game. It's all points-based. What's interesting about the gameplay that you are watching now is that it's a mix of both fast cars and slow cars. So, as you can see, uh, the Mercia Ligo was the car that we're going to be using for these first two races. Uh, but a bit later, you're going to see a lower-powered 370Z. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see the contrast between the two. For me, from what I've tested, out having higher powered cars is definitely more important and I have seen a few people moan about the fact you can use stuff like Mercia Lagos in drift events I don't really get that to be honest uh, it's a video game I, I think people who say that just need to chill to be honest um, but it's really cool for me at least from my perspective uh, you know to be able to see the difference in, in, in power especially um, from something like the Mercia Lago to something like even like the FD you're seeing on the screen now there is actually some FD gameplay I can bring up from Gamescom last year a bit later in the video another cool thing about drift is if, if you do invite your crew to some co-op campaign um, it's actually non-contact I don't know why more games don't do this it literally makes no sense to me I see this all the freaking time for some reason I don't know why racing developers don't do this I know Need for Speed doesn't do this I know Forza hardly does this um, ghosting you know non-contact Thank Lord that Ivory Tower actually included this in the drift mode. Could you imagine what this would be like if it was contact? It would be absolute carnage, especially you know in you know PVP modes where you're playing with random people. Again, we haven't heard as much information on PVP modes, and I hope we do hear on some of that soon because that's the only kind of worry I have with the crew too is it's PVP mode because they haven't really shown off anything. But hopefully, if the last game is anything to go by, it should be pretty goddamn awesome. Now the gameplay you're seeing now is actually the first of a drift 
Rift event I did when I went to the recording event. The one you saw before was actually my last. And I'm pretty sure you can see a huge difference in how used I am to the actual physics model and the drifting in this game. Uh, it just does genuinely take a, a minute to get used to. I'm quite, you know, a hardcore racing person. It's my main genre, I'd like to say. So you'd expect me to go in and just be able to ace it first time. But it does genuinely take a bit of getting used to. It's very, very different to the original uh, drift spec in the Wild Run that was obviously introduced um, through that expansion in the Crew 1. Um, and it, 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 I, I would say it's much improved. It takes a, a lot more skill. The throttle control is something which is really, really interesting. You actually do have to come off the throttle. When you come off the throttle, the car will slow down. You can enter angles at a lot sharper of, of, of an angle, I guess you could say. Uh, it's one of those things hard to explain, but once you play the game, you'll understand what I mean. Um, again, it's very, very, it is very, very, very simple. And for those that are wondering, because I know there's probably going to be a few people that are wondering, yes, you, it's hard. It's, it's a bit hard to, to do so, but I have spun out whilst drifting in this game. I just want to point that out for those, you know, that are a bit curious. I have done that. Again, it is, it's, it's pretty hard to spin out in this game. Like, you've really got to give it some, really got to put it, push it to the edge to do so and try to get maximum attack on, on those points. Um, but it is possible. I have done it myself. Um, and I think that's something which a lot of people are going to be interested to hear. And obviously, with the cars in this game, there's a lot of tuning options. Everything from the camber to the, you know, suspension rates to traction control to ESP to how much help you need sliding within the game obviously if you turn that off it's going to be a lot better getting used to it you know without the assists um but there's a lot of assists you can turn off and on on this game which is something which is really really nice i know a lot of people you know coming from a lot more hardcore games are going to really really appreciate that i know from how the game looks it looks quite floaty but i can assure you it's really really not the case you can see me here in the, in this 370 it's a bit lower powered not as high powered as the mercy lago and it's a lot easier to get slides going and to get combos going and to chain drifts together and to chain drifts together is really really rewarding in this game and again it's really nice to have a game where it is rewarding to chain drifts because it's, it's it's very few and far between nowadays there's not very many games where you know it's, it's actually difficult to drift i feel like forza is really easy and need for speed is really easy and those are the only other two arcade games that are on the market as with the crew 2 it's a bit different it's a bit harder you're going to struggle to drift in race cars and you're going to struggle to drift in street cars but in the drift spec cars it's a completely different story and it is genuinely really fun and i think to be honest if i'm cruising around i think the drift cars are probably going to be my car of choice now, I'm going to let the gameplay roll out because I'm sure you guys are going to want to hear this uh, 370Z, you know, you know, making its noise. So, what I'm going to go ahead and do is leave this playing for you guys so you guys can see the rest of this gameplay. I will see you guys in the next one. You guys have been awesome. Stay safe and peace.